Hi guys, a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming examination or aapka weekend bhi kaafi achcha gaya hoga. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247. And in today's session, we are going to talk about these three important news articles. The first one is about NSE, the National Stock Exchange, which has recently got the in-principle approval of SEBI to set up a social stock exchange as a separate segment on its NSE. Second is the new pension scheme with assured returns, which is recently talked about by the chairman of PFRDA. And thirdly, we'll talk about the state of the economy report, which RBI has released as a part of its monthly bulletin for the month of December. So starting with the very first one, as I have talked about, it is about the social stock exchanges. Now the social stock exchanges has been in news and it was for the very first time talked about by the, our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman. And in this case, we have also discussion bhi ki hui hai in the month of September when the detailed framework was issued regarding this social stock exchange. So what is the news now? So the news is that SEBI has recently given an in-principle approval so it i'm sorry so sebi has recently given an in principle approval to national stock exchange one of the stock exchanges uh, one of the largest stock exchanges of india to set up a social stock exchange as a separate segment so initially social stock exchanges launch hone the right ab usko aap nse ke andar hi dalte ya bsc ke andar dalte aisa na karke unhone kya kiya since they are separate segments right NSCP, if you go, then by product wise, there are separate segments. Equity, we have a separate segment. For fixed income security, we have a different segment. Similarly, for derivatives, we have a separate segment. Now onwards, social stock exchange will be another segment in the list of products and services. Okay? Now, similar in principle approval was also granted to BSC in the month of October. The Bombay Stock Exchange, which is one of the oldest stock exchange of Asia. So this is the important news. Now you will come in mind, what is this in-principle approval? In-principle approval, what is it? So one is total approval that is required by any entity to take. Another is in-principle whereby SEPI on the basis of the performance, there is no detail application nahi mangta. on the basis of the performance and everything, they grant the approval to the entity. So this is known as the in-principle approval. It is the easiest way to get an approval without providing or uh, getting into the details of detailed instructions or documents or filing. So in sab ko hata ke in-principle approval in dono ko mil gai hai. So as of now we can say that since we have two social stock, uh, we have two stock exchanges that is BAC and NSC and both of them has got the in-principle approval to have or to establish a social stock exchange as a separate segment. Now, with the usage of the social stock exchanges, now people can donate to entities, to the social enterprises or to the not-for-profit organization. Those who are having the objective to invest this money with a social intent and impact. A social impact create ho sake, is liye ye donation kiya ja sakta hai by anyone, by any investor, right? So, and thus, such a platform, such a platform like the Social Stock Exchange will help the social enterprises as well as the not-for-profit organization to contribute further to our so sustainable development goals. So, this may be contribution ki jayegi by these social enterprises who will be mobilizing the funds that are received through this social stock exchanges. So I hope you have clear ho gaya hoga. We have already discussed in detail the framework about the social stock exchange. But for your perusal, you will brief mil brief. We will start and we'll talk about the concept of social stock exchange. As I have mentioned, the idea was for the very first time talked about our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman in her budget speech of 2019-20. Tab unhone social stock exchange ki baat kari thi and at that time she proposed that there should, there should be an exchange which, is, which should be regulated under the ambit of SEBI. Ki SEBI usko regulate karne chahiye and such an uh, exchange should be used or should list 
सच सोशल एंटरप्राइजेज एंड वॉलेंट्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो ऑल टाइप ऑफ वॉलेंट्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस लेट्स से सेक्शन एट कंपनीज हो गई राइट वी हैव सेक्शन एट कंपनीज एनी ट्रस्ट एनी सोसाइटी रजिस्टर्ड सोसाइटी वर्किंग फॉर द पीपल वर्किंग फॉर सम सोशल कोज इन सारे इंस्टीट्यूट को इन सारे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को लिस्ट करना है एक सोशल एक्सचेंज पे एंड दीज एंटरप्राइजेज और एनपीओज विल वर्क फॉर द सोशल वेलफेयर ऑब्जेक्टिव and what will be the uh, eligibility how, how will they raise finance using this social stock exchange so they can raise funds or money or capital by issuance of equity shares or let's say some kinds of debt debentures issue kar sakte hain some debt securities issue kar sakte hain ya fir issuing units such as a mutual fund unit so these are the mode that was proposed by our finance minister nirmala sitaraman आई होप आपको यहां तक समझ आ गया एक एक्सचेंज uh, क्रिएट करना है विच विल वर्क अंडर द रेगुलेटरी एम्बिट ऑफ सेबी दिस इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट एंड सर्टन एंटिटीज एलिजिबल एंटिटीज सच एज द सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस एंड द वॉलेंट्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्किंग फॉर द कोज वर्किंग फॉर द सोशल ऑब्जेक्टिव और फॉर द कॉज ऑफ द पीपल शुड बी लिस्टेड ऑन सच एक्सचेंजेस एंड दे कैन रेज फाइनेंस बाई वे ऑफ इक्विटी डेट और म्यूचुअल फंड now as i have mentioned the detailed framework for the social stock exchange since it is a very novel concept has been already talked about so, july mein iski baat charcha shuru hui thi and in the month of september 2022 it has already been issued by sebi sebi ne detailed framework issue kiya tha jahan pe talked about the eligibility criteria the eligible the eligible activities in which people should invest uh in which these enterprises should invest to have a social intent and an impact on the country right and to have sustainable development goals to be achieved iske alawa disclosure frameworks aur bahut sare rules and regulations sebi ne detail framework mein issue kiya tha in the month of september right now government ne bhi ek notification issue ki thi through the official gazette whereby the securities contract regulation act of 1956 ab ye contract kya baat karta hai kya act kya baat karta hai so this securities contract regulation act of 1956 list down the the types of securities which are regulated by sebi aur iske andar a very new instrument was um, was um, issued or notified by the government and that was declared by the government and that new instrument is nothing but the zero coupon zero principal bonds so zero coupon zero principal zc zp was the new instrument that was declared as a new security under the securities contract regulation act of 1956 to ye aapko dhyan hona chahiye ki kis act ke andar zc zp ko as a security mana gaya hai we have equities we have debts oh, debts we have fixed income securities we also have derivatives we also have structured financial products apart from that now in securities we will also have another security known as a zero coupon zero principal ab zero coupon zero principal kya hota hai aap sab ne zero coupon bonds ke bare mein suna hoga jaise bhi aap sab ne suna hoga now these zero coupon bonds are issued without any interest or coupon rate on it और ये हमेशा डिस्काउंट पे इशू होता है फॉर एग्जांपल ए हंड्रेड रुपी बॉन्ड विल बी इशूड फॉर 95 एंड लेट्स से फॉर एट इयर्स। दैट मींस आज के डेट पे इफ यू आर परचेजिंग दिस जीरो कूपन बॉन्ड यू विल बी परचेजिंग दिस फॉर 95 एंड आफ्टर एट इयर्स एट द टाइम ऑफ रिडेमशन यू विल बी गेटिंग रुपीज द फेज वैल्यू ऑफ द शेयर That is known as zero coupon bond. अब ये देखो बस zero coupon bond है यहाँ पे zero principal नहीं है In case of zero coupon, zero principal bond, interest rate नहीं होगी Similarly, ये जो हंड्रेड रुपीज आपको वापस मिल रहा था जेड सी बी जीरो कूपन बॉन्ड के अंदर वो चीज अब आपको नहीं मिलेगी राइट दैट मीन्स दैट यू परचेज द बॉन्ड लेट से अ सोशल एंटरप्राइज हैज इशूड सर्टन zero coupon zero principal bond and as an investor as a philanthropist i invest in those bonds so that the money could be utilized by the social enterprise for certain social good in that case whatever money or whatever shares whatever zero coupon zero principal bond i purchase i will not be getting anything in return return wahan pe zero hoga 
रिटर्न इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्रिंसिपल रिटर्न इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट मेरा जीरो होगा प्लस द प्रिंसिपल रीपेमेंट कि पांच साल बाद मुझे वो प्रिंसिपल वापस मिल जाए ऐसा कुछ नहीं होगा दैट विल ऑल्सो बी जीरो एंड हैंस द नेम zero coupon zero principal i hope this much explanation is enough for you to understand the concept of zero coupon zero principal moving forward and talking about this zero coupon or kya iski technicalities hain so it says uh, sebi has said that the subscription to this zczp would be similar to a philanthropic donation jaise aap donation karte ho when you make donation you do not get anything in return right similar is the case with zero coupon zero principal second the social enterprises and not for profit organization can issue this zero coupon zero principal publicly or privately publicly kaise hoga ipos jaise publicly hota hai and privately kaise hota hai private placements kuch logon ko hi aapne bataya that i am issuing this bond and for this and this purpose so if you are willing then you can donate to aap privately bhi kar sakte ho publicly bhi kar sakte ho again one more thing such zc zp will be issued only by the not for profit organization npo hi issue kar sakta hai koi dusri let's say there is a there is a company or there is an entity which is for profit which is working for profit but its intent is that of social objective in that case such enterprises will not be eligible to issue a zc zp it is only the not for profit organization or let's say the section 8 companies under the companies act of 2013 will be eligible to issue this zc zp i hope itna aapko samajh aa gaya hoga next talks about the issue size so let's say if an enterprise a not for profit organization wants to issue a zc zp in that case the minimum issue size kitna minimum issue kar sakta hai that is of rupees 1 crore so at a time the issue size minimum should be or should be at least rupees 1 crore 1 crore issue diya jayega for the public for the investors to make investment or to subscribe to such philanthropic donation now what should be the minimum application size suppose 1 crore ki aapne zc zp issue kar di for a person if an investor wants to uh, wants to purchase such or wants to donate through this zero coupon zero principal bonds in that case a person can take that for minimum subscription application size of rupees 2 lakh to so, ek person ke liye minimum kitna hai to subscribe for a zero coupon zero principal bond it is rupees 2 lakh theek hai so i hope application size aapko samajh aa gaya hoga minimum si- issue size aapko samajh aa gaya the company the not for profit organization do 1 crore minimum 1 crore size ka zc zp issue karega there will be 1000 people who will be investing so 1 crore issue ho gaya every person who wants to invest or take the zero coupon zero principal bond should come up with a minimum application size matlab wo 2 lakhs ke multiple mein hi 2 lakhs मिनिमम सब्सक्राइब कर सकता है उससे कम इफ सपोज अ पर्सन वॉन्ट्स टू इन्वेस्ट जस्ट वन पॉइंट फाइव लैख इसका सब्सक्रिप्शन कैंसिल कर दिया जाएगा हिज एप्लीकेशन मनी वुड बी रिफंडेड बिकॉज द मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन साइज इज रुपीज टू लैख इसके ऊपर आप जितना भी करना चाहो यू कैन डू इट सो आई होप दिस इज ऑल्सो क्लियर टू यू मूविंग फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट द एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया फॉर अ सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज अब देखो यहाँ पे सेज दैट एस एस सी विल बी ए सेपरेट सेगमेंट ऑफ द एग्जिस्टिंग स्टॉक एक्सचेंज जो हमने अभी रेड रीड किया बोथ फॉर एन एस सी एंड बी एस सी देर इज गोइंग टू बी ए सेपरेट स्टॉक एक्सचेंज नेक्स्ट एलिजिबल एंटरप्राइजेस तो दो तरीके के एंटरप्राइजेस यहाँ पे एलिजिबल होंगे द फर्स्ट इज एन पी ओ नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इनकी प्रॉफिट से कुछ लेना देना नहीं है एंड सेकेंड आर दो एंटिटीज who work for profit they are for profit but such enterprises such entities work for social cause therefore for profit social enterprises having some kind of social intent and they are trying to create certain social impact theek hai to ye words aapke important hai eligible enterprises mein npos and for profit social enterprises are eligible to be listed on the social stock exchange now 
सपोज अब ऐसा भी हो सकता है देर कुड बी अ केस दैट सिंस सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस आर देयर ऑन द फ्रंट पीपल कैन फॉर्म अ कंपनी राइट नाउ एंड दे केन बी लिस्टेड ऑन द सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज इस केस में क्या होगा पीपल विल मेक और मिस यूज सच मनी फॉर दैट मैटर वट सेबी हैज डन इज इट हैज कैप्ट अ मिनिमम एलिजिबिलिटी एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया एंड द मिनिमम एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया इन टर्म इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ द रजिस्ट्रेशन that is any enterprise let's say it is a non for profit organization or for a profit social enterprise who has been working consistently for a minimum of 3 years that is they have a certificate of registration for at least 3 years then only such enterprises will be eligible to be listed on the social stock exchange i hope this point is clear to you next is raising of funds as i have mentioned only non for profit organization the npos the eligible npos will be allowed to issue zero coupon zero principal bonds as well as units of mutual funds for other for profit social enterprises they are allowed to issue funds or to raise funds by issuing equity shares तो अगर क्वेश्चन आए कैन फॉर प्रॉफिट सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस रेज मनी थ्रू जीरो कूपन जीरो प्रिंसिपल नो इट इज जस्ट फॉर द नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट द अदर डिटेल्स द अदर डिटेल्स इज रिगार्डिंग द एलिजिबिली एलिजिबिलिटी सॉरी द एलिजिबल एक्टिविटीज सो वॉट आर द एलिजिबल एक्टिविटीज इन विच दीज सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस be it the not for profit organization or for the profit social enterprises are allowed to make investment so sebi ne ek list prepare karke di hui hai and that list consists of around 16 activities and this activities includes items or uh, or and activities such as healthcare healthcare mein aap kuch kaam karna cha rahe ho education employability livelihoods eradicating hunger poverty malnutrition inequality empowerment of the women supporting incubators the new uh, innovators who wants to do something in the social enterprise then let's say gender equality empowerment lgbtqa qia plus communities so in communities ke liye bhi if any enterprise wants to work or intends to work and create social impact in that case such entities will be eligible तो ये आपकी एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया है जो भी आप पैसा रेज करोगे एज अ सोशल एंटरप्राइज और एज एन एनपीओ यू नीड टू इन्वेस्ट और यू नीड टू अंडरटेक सर्टेन एक्टिविटीज सर्टेन इवेंट्स सर्टेन दैट रिजल्ट इन प्रमोटिंग दीज इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रॉड एक्टिविटीज एज लिस्टेड बाय सेबी ठीक है अब इन क्या क्या हो सकते हैं सो इन activities would include any kind of political or religious organization so humne yahan pe baat kari thi ki social cause ke liye hona chahiye in in that social cause political and religious organizations are excluded ye kabhi bhi uska part nahi banenge similarly corporate foundations then we have professional or trade associations trade unions bante hain right wo sare is eligible enterprise ke part nahi honge similarly infrastructure and housing companies are excluded now there comes a term called affordable housing if suppose there is a social enterprise and that that wants to create a social impact by providing affordable housing for all in that case such housing related projects that provides affordable housing will be an eligible eligible activity as prescribed by sebi and will be coming under livelihoods let's say theek hai तो ये पॉइंट आपको ध्यान रखना है अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग इज इंक्लूडेड और इज एन एलिजिबल एक्टिविटी अंडर द सोशल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज आई होप आपको ये क्लियर हो गया होगा इन डिटेल लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज काफी छोटा सा न्यूज है दिस न्यूज टॉक्स अबाउट मार्स सो दिस इज अ न्यू टर्म फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू विच स्टैंड फॉर मिनिमम एश्योर्ड रिटर्न स्कीम minimum assured return scheme so recently the chairman of pfrda whose name is supratim bandyopadhyay inhone bola hai that pfrda will soon roll out or will come up with a minimum assured return scheme by next year 2023 by the month of may june and such scheme will be india's 
फर्स्ट स्कीम दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग मिनिमम अश्योर्ड रिटर्न अब और ये जो स्कीम आएगा दैट विल बी लॉन्च बाय पी एफ आर डी ए अंडर द नेशनल पेंशन स्कीम तो एन पी एस द एन पी एस जो है हमारा नेशनल पेंशन सिस्टम या फिर नेशनल पेंशन स्कीम उसके अंदर ये लॉन्च किया जाएगा एज यू ऑल नो नेशनल पेंशन स्कीम क्या होता है ना दिस इज अ मार्केट डिटर्मिन स्कीम वेर बाय देर इज अ डिफाइंड कंट्रीब्यूशन द एम्प्लॉयर इन द एम्प्लॉय डज अ डिफाइंड मेक्स अ डिफाइंड कंट्रीब्यूशन बट वॉट एवर रिटर्न दैट यू गेट इज नॉट डिफाइंड बट इट इज मार्केट डिटर्मिन मार्केट के सो द मनी इज इन्वेस्टेड इन टू द इकोनॉमी इन टू द मार्केट लेट्स इन इक्विटी इन डेट इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज और सम काइंड ऑफ बॉन्ड्स नाउ वॉट एवर रिटर्न दैट यू गेट आउट ऑफ दोज is given to you in the form of let's say lump sum amount and in the form of monthly pension so it is a defined contribution but not a defined benefit scheme to hamara jo nps hai it will not be a defined benefit scheme but the recent the newly talked about mars the minimum assured return scheme will be both defined कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन क्योंकि यहाँ पे द मिनिमम एनुअल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बाय द बाय द पीपल वुड बी रुपीज फाइव थाउजेंड पर एन एम सो देर इज अ डिफाइंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड देर विल बी अ डिफाइंड बेनिफिट बिकॉज द पीपल हु ऑल विल बी इन्वेस्टिंग अंडर द स्कीम विल बी गेटिंग अ गारंटीड फोर टू फाइव परसेंट एनुअल रिटर्न ऑन द पेंशन अमाउंट दैट दे हैव अक्यूमुलेटेड फॉर टेन ईयर्स टेन ईयर्स तक 10 इयर्स तक उनको एक एश्योर्ड रिटर्न मिलेगी दैट विल बी इन द रेंज ऑफ 4 टू 5 परसेंट देर फॉर दिस मास विल बी अ डिफाइंड बेनिफिट एज वेल एज अ डिफाइंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन स्कीम आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू ऐसा जबकि एन पी एस में नहीं है नाउ इफ आई आस्क यू नेम वन ऑफ द स्कीम और वन ऑफ द वन ऑफ द स्कीम लेट से विच प्रोवाइड्स अ डिफाइंड बेनिफिट क्योंकि ये डिफाइंड बेनिफिट नहीं है इट जस्ट हैज डिफाइंड कंट्रीब्यूशन सच अ स्कीम इफ आई कैन थिंक ऑफ एज नन अदर देन द अटल पेंशन योजना ए पी वाई लॉन्च बाई द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया अंडर दिस अटल पेंशन योजना वहां पे भी एक डिफाइंड कंट्रीब्यूशन है बेस्ड ऑन द टाइम दैट यू आर ज्वाइनिंग द स्कीम एज वेल एज यू गेट अ डिफाइंड बेनिफिट द मंथली पेंशन दैट यू रिसीव अंडर द अटल पेंशन योजना could be uh, could range from 1000 to 5000 right so such a scheme has been launched and will be launched by pfrda next year now it says that ab kuch technicalities hain upper age kya hai if you talk about apy the atal pension yojana yahan pe the maximum age to get subscribed under apy is 40 years in case of mas it would be below 50 years specific nahi diya hai 50 years tak ka टाइमलाइन दिया हुआ है ना पेंशन विल स्टार्ट वंस द पेंशन वंस द पर्सन और द पेंशनर अटेन्स द एज ऑफ सिक्सटी ठीक है नाउ द गारंटीड रिटर्न फ्रॉम मास वुड बी हाफ ऑफ द एक्चुअल रिटर्न अंदर द मार्केट बिकॉज एन पी एस के अंदर लोगों को कितनी रिटर्न मिलती थी उनको रिटर्न मिलती थी अराउंड एट टू नाइन परसेंट बट अंडर दिस दे विल बी गेटिंग अराउंड फोर टू फाइव दे फोर इट इज हाफ ऑफ द एक्चुअल रिटर्न बट यू गेट अ डिफाइंड or you get a assured return on the mass and since they are providing you with an assured return there will be a higher fund management fee management has to be done of the fund so that they can invest in such securities which give them which gives them the desired return therefore there will be a higher management fee in case of mass as compared to nps i hope this is clear to you let's move forward and talk about the third important news so as you all know the rbi the reserve bank of india month on month issues a publication known as the rbi bulletin to aap sab ne bulletin suna hoga sometimes it is very important for you but sometimes kuch aise articles aate hain that is not very relevant from the exam perspective but nonetheless you, you need to go through this right and for the month of december 2022 the rbi bulletin has been released and among this amongst the the list of reports that has been released under the rbi bulletin one of the report is the state of the economy report and today we are going to cover this state of the economy report now if we talk about the key highlights of the report first let's talk about the global economy what is the global economic outlook so according to this report the state of the economy report the global economic outlook has been very darkened 
So it is very dark and why it is dark and because of the numerous monetary policy actions taken by the central banks across the world. And we and so across the world or across countries, these countries or the or the central bank of these countries have taken a uh, have taken have taken monetary stricter or tighter monetary policy actions whereby they have increased the policy rate and because of these we are all hearing about global recession that the economy has slowed down in order to curtail inflation these countries has had increased their policy rate but that has been detrimental to their growth and therefore there are signs that there could be recession in the economy and this recession is expected to be of a sharper one as that has been mentioned by IMF, the International Monetary Fund. So, they said that there is a recession ki situation aa rahi hai, and this recession in the situation could be very steep or very sharp. Now, next is the vulnerability of the emerging market economies. Why, are, why were they vulnerable? They were vulnerable because of the depreciation that they have faced because of the inflation condition because of the geopolitical tension of the russia ukraine war and supply side disruptions they have been very vulnerable to the volatility that they have seen in the prices as well as in the exchange rates third it talks about the debt distress that for the countries that has actually increased because of the appreciation of the us dollar since most of the debt that the indian government or India had taken was in the form of US or was denominated in the US dollars and therefore since it has been appreciating their total debt in Indian terms, Indian rupee terms has actually increased and therefore there are chances that there will be higher default rates. So this was the outlook of the global economy. Let's move forward and talk about the outlook for the Indian economy, what is the Indian growth outlook? So according to the report, the near term or the short term growth outlook for the Indian economy is supported by the domestic drivers. Matlab, you have a positive sign dikhne ko mili hai, specifically for the case of India. Why? Because of these following reasons. Recently, we have seen that our headline inflation, which is measured in terms of the consumer price index, has actually gone down, right? It was around 5.89, 5.9%. However, one should also be cautious that since the headline inflation has gone down, but the core inflation, what is this core inflation? The core inflation excludes the volatility part, that is the energy prices as well as the food prices. If we hum in volatility, ko hata kar dekhe, then the real picture that has come to our come to our uh, to our for that that we can see is that the core inflation has remained very sticky that is headline inflation no doubt has come below six percent it is around 5.9 percent but the core inflation which removes the volatility wo inflation be kafi sticky rahi hai, and that has been around six percent so iska ye matlab hua ki inflation Volatility ke wajah se zyada nahi ho rahi hai. It is because of other reasons as well, right? So this is shown by the core inflation. Next, there are weakening input cost pressure, which is obvious. Agar inflation kam hoga, to input cost hai, jo raw material ke prices hai, that will go down. Therefore, there is a weakening, less lesser pressure on the input cost. And there has been a boost in the corporate sales. Sales has been increasing and also we have seen an upturn or an increase in the investment levels in the economy. And all of these has been promoting or indicating a growth momentum for the Indian economy. So this was all that was mentioned about the Indian growth outlook in the RBI state of the economy report. Moving forward and let's talk about the future prospects. Future prospects kya hai? So the report mentioned that since India has been uh, has been uh, has been the president of the G20 meetings that has been recently going on, and is setting out and India has been setting out its priorities and deliv deliverables under its G20 presidency. There is a sense that India ka up time aa gaya hai, right? So it is the time in the center of the world stage. That's the time for India has actually arrived. Or here India can uh, priorities ko lay down kar sakta hai. It can actually talk about it, right? And also it has, uh, the report also mentioned the 
level or the status of the Indian economy whereby it stated that if we talk about India's economy, then it is one, it is the third largest economy in the world in terms of the purchasing power parity. Agar hum dekhen ki India mein, if we are supposed to purchase a basket of goods, the same if you want to purchase in some other countries, in that level, in that real terms level, India's economy is the third largest economy. If we remove inflation, we talk about the purchasing power ke baat kare. in that case, it is the third largest economy. And in terms of the exchange rate, if we talk exchange rate, ke terms mein baat kare, then India's economy is the fifth largest economy. Next, it also mentioned that India accounts for 3.6% of the G20 G, uh, GDP. So, if we in G20 countries ki GDP ko accumulate kare, and if we calculate or compare the total of their GDP to the India's GDP, then, then the GDP of India is around 3.6%. And if we talk about in real terms, if we talk PPP ki terms, mein baat kare, then it is much higher. It is 8.2%, around 8%, which is a very good figure. And based on all of these, even other the rating agencies have come up that in the year 2023, India's growth or India's economy is projected to be amongst the fastest growing economy within the G20 countries. So in G20 countries, maybe India's economy is considered or is projected to be one of the fastest growing economy. So this was the future prospect that was highlighted in the state of the economy report as presented under the RBI bulletin. I hope this is clear to you and you have understood whatever we have talked about. In case if you are liking the way we are teaching and if you have a detailed, if you have certain suggestions or feedback for us, then you can go and uh, write it down uh, maybe in the comment section or you can also make use of this details, the numbers, the mail ID, you can go to our website and you can also write it down on the discussion forum. Right? Moving forward, you can also download our app from the Google Play Store whereby you will get access to any exam related updates, live video sessions, monthly magazines, past year papers and quizzes. Let's move forward to the questions that we have for today. For all those who wants to answer on your own, please pause the video and then answer it and then look at the solution. So let's start with the very first question that we have for today. The question says, consider and identify the correct statements. So we need to identify the correct statements with regards to the social stock exchange. Again, I'm saying this is an important topic. Aap achche se karke jao, right? Moving forward, the first statement says both NSC and BSC have received the in principle approval of RBI to set up SSC as a social stock exchange as a separate segment. Again, everything is correct except for the fact that here RBI will not be here, here SEBI will be. Since we are talking about social stock exchange, SEBI would be the right fit here. If you read it in the quickly, you will get the right and you will mark it right. And then your answer can be wrong there. So watch out. Second, the idea of a social stock exchange was for the first time talked about by Arun Jaitley. Again, this is wrong. This was talked about by Nirmala Sitaraman in her budget speech. Third, in case of social stock exchange, funds or capital can be raised by way of equity, debt or mutual funds. This is absolutely correct. So correct statement in may say three only. Therefore, option C would be the correct answer here. Moving forward to the next question that we have. The question says zero coupon, zero principle is a listed security under which of the following regulations or act. So it is none other than the Securities Contract Regulation Act of 1956. And this was notified or declared by the government in the official Gazette notification. So I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward. The third question that we have, we need to identify the incorrect statements. Okay? First statement and these statements relate to ZC, ZP. First, the minimum issue size as prescribed by SEBI is rupees 5 crore, which is wrong. As we have studied, it should be rupees 1 crore. Next, minimum application size for subscription is rupees 2 lakh, which is absolutely correct. And third, both not-for-profit organization and for-profit social enterprises 
can issue zero coupon zero principal bonds which is very wrong kyunki as i have mentioned npo are eligible to issue zczp as well as mutual funds for pro and for the rest that is the for profit social enterprises they can raise funds by making use of equity incorrect statements yahan pe 1 and 3 therefore option e is the correct answer here Let's move forward. Next question. Next question says, which of the following is or part of the eligibility criteria with regards to the social stock exchange? First, eligible social enterprises should have a certificate of registration for at least three years, which is absolutely correct. Second, NPOs can raise capital by issuing not only zero coupon bonds and mutual funds, but also through the issue of equity shares as well. Which is wrong? Bus ZC ZP or mutual funds se wo issue kar sakte hain. And third, eligible social enterprises can make use of the funds raised through the social stock exchanges to invest in projects such as affordable housing for all. And as we have discussed, this is correct, right? Or hume uh, correct statements hi identify karne the. That is one and three. Option D is the correct answer here. Let's move forward. The next question, the last question for today. The question says, which of the following is or are true about the minimum assured return scheme? The first statement, the minimum annual contribution for mass would be rupees 10,000 per annum. As we have studied, it should be rupees 5,000. So, this statement is wrong. Second, the scheme guarantees 4 to 5 percent annual returns on the pension corpus for 10 years, which is absolutely correct. It is almost half of the returns that a person would have got under the NPS scheme. Third, the scheme will be issued by PFRDA, absolutely correct, under the NPS system, this is also right, and will carry a higher management fee. This is absolutely correct. Now, we have to identify correct statements here. 2 and 3, option B is the correct answer here. Again, the answers are also provided to you. In case if you have any doubt, you can write it down in the comment section and you can also make use of the discussion forum. This was all for today. I hope you enjoyed the session. Keep learning. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.